Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Ernesto V. Carandang II from the Departamento ng Filipino. It is my pleasure to share with you my current research titled Assimilation of Spanish Terms for Church Adornments During the Spanish Colonial Period in the Philippines. To start my presentation, let me discuss first the concept of a plaza complex. When the Spaniards colonized the islands and converted its inhabitants to Catholicism, they introduced the so-called plaza complex. They required natives near and far to put up their houses around an open space they called the plaza. The plaza complex is usually rectangular or square in shape, and it would consist of a chapel or a church, a municipio or a tribunal, a marketplace, a cementerio, and the houses around it. It became a basic design of community. This physical setup enabled the Spaniards to effectively manage and control the natives to bring them closer to Catholicism. Other than its political function, the plaza served well the religious component of the Spanish colonization of the country. It served as the place of conversion and worship. Still on the religious function of the plaza was the fact that it became the center of various activities of the people. Patronal fiestas were introduced by the Spanish priests to attract people to gather in the plaza. Furthermore, the Holy Week and Christmas celebration, passion singing, religious processions, and later the Flores de Mayo and Santa Cruzan added more religious fervor and piety to the parishioners and visitors. The devotion of Filipinos to their Catholic religion does not only revolve around the sacraments and doctrines, but also on images of veneration known as santos or poon and the adornments that make the church more attractive, sacred, and endearing. During the Spanish colonial times, santos and adornments were introduced and were usually made of wood, metal, glass, plaster, and precious ivory. The seasons or climate were also considered in the production of the santos and adornments. At times, certain material, materials like ivory, glass, dyes, and tools need to be brought to Manila by the galleons. Adornments during that time used indigenous materials like nara, batikuling, walistingting, anahaw, and other indigenous materials available in the Philippines. The church became a well-decorated venue for worship and is filled with sacred items that the people revere. Today, I'm sharing with you a piece of my current research aimed to collect Spanish words related to church adornments that has become familiar, familiar terms among the Philippines. First in the list is the andas. The early procession of our ancestors used andas. It is a plaster decorated with those born on the shoulders of the two for or more people. It is Spanish collegated of andas or is andas. It's an infinite adornment as we became a sinner with a plaster or associated and popularized by the Islam. This task of caring is the other way that every nation can really since andas are carried by volunteers, this task of carrying the image can be considered as a sacrifice. Next is, of course, the popular carrozas. It was also around this time that the andas were converted into carrozas by mounting them on wheels. Another term used in the Philippines for carroza is carro, Spanish. And thus became a synonymous to a platform associated and popularized by the Black Nazarene, whose feast day is celebrated every January 9. Since andas are carried by volunteers, this task of carrying the image can be considered as a sacrifice. Next is, of course, the popular carrozas. It was also around this time that the andas were converted into carrozas by mounting them on wheels. 
Another term used in the Philippines for carroza is caro, Spanish for expensive, but others say it is diminutive of carruaje or a carriage. Carrozas, or in Tagalog, carroza, became a familiar feature of processions around the plaza and poblacion. It is usually adorned with local flowers like sampagita on sticks or abaca strings and palm leaves arranged on a bundled water lily stalks. These often have embossed metal decorations and cloths forming a skirt to hide the wheels of the carriage, along with scenery for tableau representing episodes from the gospel. The parts of a carroza which are quite common among owners and camareros are the sayal, sobresayal, senepa, pescante, albortante, most of which came from the Spanish language. We also have your regal calandra. It is a funeral carroza used exclusively by the Santo Entiero or the Christ lying in state. A Good Friday processions. It is patterned after the horse-drawn funeral couches of Europe. Extant examples from the early 20th century can still be found in the Philippines. Like the carroza, it is well lit with pescantes and albortantes. It is a Spanish term for grill or protective covering. Another type of a carroza is the ocho vado. The name is derived from the basic carroza shape that has eight sides with one or two layers. It is probably the most popular shape as it was easy to mass produce. It is the most versatile among carrozas as it can be used for almost any single santo. Of course, we have the colorful estandarte. This is a banner that features the embroidered name of the patron saint and its image. This is traditionally used for processions to identify the santo in the carroza. And we have to mention the handheld staff called vara alta. It is a Spanish term meaning a foot higher, symbolizing authority of the present and past hermano mayores in a particular parish. These hermanos are expected to lead and coordinate the preparation for the feast day or fiesta. We can also see in the church the ramillete. In Spanish, the term means bunch or cluster. A ramillete de flores means bouquet of flowers. In the Philippines, a ramillete has been associated with a type of ornamentation found in old Catholic altars, side by side along sacred images or ecclesiastical objects. These ornaments replicate flowers and are sometimes topped with candlestick holders. Ramillietes are usually made of carved wood, painted, or with rapose metalwork where a sheet of metal is hammered into relief. Or it is called in Tagalog as pukpok or pinukpok. At this point, I will present the accessories for the santo or poon. These accessories are made of metal like tin, silver, brass, and even gold. There are instances that these accessories are designed with gems, may it be semi-precious or precious stones. The first of which is tres potencias. Tres potencias is a Spanish phrase for three powers are never used for any other subject and are interpreted to mean various things, such as Christ's three faculties of will, memory, and understanding. The letters engraved JHS means Jesus Hominum Salvator, or Jesus Savior of Mankind. Next is the aureola. The most common headdress for image is the aureola, behind or above the head of an image. Ariola is the Spanish word for halo. We also have the rostrillo, a halo decorating the perimeter of the face. It is also known as the resplendor. It is commonly found but not restricted to images of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Rostrillo is a Spanish word for the ornament that women put around their faces. Of course, we have the popular corona. 
Female saints may often wear tiara, symbolizing the crown of the saints. A more expensive type in the Philippines is made of solid brass and pukpok, Tagalog for hammered by an, an artisan. The costliest of crowns are those made of solid sterling, silver, or gold. And of course, lastly, the cetro or the scepter is an ornamented staff carried by the Santo Nino or the Holy Mother as a symbol of Power. This is explicitly expressed in the text of the Nine Days Novena of Santo Nino de Cebu, which is the first image to reach the archipelago. We have other adorn adornments that can be found inside the church, like the relieve and the retablo. The Philippine Catholic Church have instilled the aesthetics of significance of these adornments to their faith. And there are many who are becoming more active in the church activities and the ownership of poon or santo, carotha, and other adornments. And according to Mr. Jolo Tamayo, the editor of Arte Sacra PH, we are witnessing the renewed interest in santo among the youth a good symptom that the church adornments will indeed continue to inspire the next generations. Certainly, this will remain in the tradition and faith of Filipino Catholics for the next 500 years. I hope that you learned and enjoyed my presentation. Stay healthy and safe. Thank you.